price hikes. Flashing your credits in between movie footage like a credit flashy asshole. Tyler Rake survives this. Scene does not contain a kick-ass Adele song. I guess this footage of them saving his life is helpful for some, but this could be replaced with some random dude saying, you shouldn't have survived that, like, at all. And then Tyler grunting, that's not a knife, this is a knife. We would write the whole thing off as him being Australian and we would have saved five minutes. Also, movies still think we need close-ups of medical procedures and I'm here to tell you we absolutely do not. When you attempt to be clever with your film title and it comes off like you just don't know how to spell your film title, no amount of physical therapy will convince us that he should be able to do anything he does later in this movie. This guy, would you? Or what? He would run over my foot. What an unusual and very specific answer to an or what. Really excited about this next chapter of my life. Reading. Would you fought your way back? You just have to find out why. I just figured it had something to do with the streaming numbers. Zurab would have to be the goddamn Flash for this guy to not react at all to someone picking up a pitchfork and aiming it anywhere in the vicinity of his face. Not cleaning the pitchfork you used to murder someone before placing it back in the dirt pile. That baby is gonna be stained, and that is all on you, Zurab. Spending enough time in this hospital to realize that mercenaries probably have better health insurance than average Americans. And that the American health crisis would be solved if we all just became mercenaries. Easy peasy. You're welcome. What the hell is this? A gift. Is it though? Tyler can barely walk, and you're giving him a cabin in the middle of all this f***ing snow and then leaving him by himself to tend to all the work that would be required to keep a place like this up and running. All right, brother. I send you that shirt. He actually will send him the shirt, and I don't know how I feel about that. What's this? We packed up your house. This is all we found. Using a lonely shoebox of stuff to tell us this hero has a tragic backstory and doesn't even own a pair of shoes, apparently. Picking up wood, ice fishing, soccer, excitement. If showing him shoveling is necessary to the story, at least provide some evidence that he tried the snowblower first. Thor Doolittleston. Other than giving us a cool scenario for the upcoming rescue operation, it's not really clear why this guy prefers to have his wife and kids in prison. Movie will eventually mutter something about control and the possibility of them leaving him, but then we get a bunch of backstory about how he has an army of followers and practically runs the country, making it seem like it would have been just as easy to keep them under his control on the outside. The main premise of the movie feels unnecessary by the logic the movie has built. This is beautiful. Honestly, but the tea, not so much. The British. You lost, right? Are you, Rake? I asked you first. Yeah, but my answer depends on yours. Movie has time for this. If you are Rake, then you are the myth of Mumbai, the legend that got the journalists out of Congo and it took down the two gangs to save the mayor of Rio. Not mentioning the numerous people in Bangladesh that he freaked out in the first movie. What if it was your ex-wife? Mia. Then we will hold that thought and go inside so you can see my chickens and discuss my dog's fashion sense. The brothers were born into war, raised in it, hardened by it. I love hearing Idris Elba speak. His words are like butter. However, exposition is exposition, and I am me, so... These brothers have got all the politicians in their pockets. The sin is either big pants or tiny politicians. Job starts in six weeks, we take our cut. I guess Alcott is here to set up the next movie and make Idris Elba play a supporting character to Chris Hemsworth yet again, but I don't think they could have made his involvement in this any more convoluted, even if they made the viewers search the credits to find out his name was Alcott. Someone would like me to believe that watching this game with a distracting crease down the middle of the screen is better than just watching on a smaller screen. They are wrong. You were clinically dead nine months ago. Movie skips Tyler checking in with Ovi a month ago, as it was teased at the end of the first movie. And to be clear, if they had included it, I would have skipped it as well. If you have a knee injury that requires this kind of brace, you don't just decide one day that you're finished with it because you need to start training like you're gonna fight Adonis Creed for the title. I now know I'm ready to do anything because I just threw an ax into a tree. Then you should delete TikTok. Well, that's a terrible idea. It is not. The death toll of this movie will make the amount of risk this guy took just for a wad of cash seem very disproportionate. At minimum, this was worth at least a bucket of cash. Convenient door opening conveniently as Tyler gets in position behind the door is convenient. Kid brings this noise-making toy along like she's never watched A Quiet Place. And unlike that kid, this one won't have to pay for her mistake with the loss of her life. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I understand Tyler has a gun, but they have numbers. Yet they still attack Tyler one at a time. Because action movie. Despite Tyler and Fam being closer to this blast, it will only affect the bad guys in this scene. Choosing to stage this fight sequence with extremely dim lighting. Assuring that I won't be able to see much of anything. That's just awesome. I love it. So much. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't think this was that kind of movie. Now we'll just carry on with everyone's dignity intact, <laughs> right? Where's my father? I'm going to feel like adding a sin every time words come out of Sandro's mouth, so I'll just add 10 here, you know, for kids. 
this prison fight is kind of awesome, but it also brawls in on cell block 99 for all the some time. My hands are tied. Tyler's arm is on fire and he keeps fighting as if his arm is not on fire. And I can't figure out if I think that's the coolest thing in the world or if I hate it. Ah, I'll take your sin back. Now I got the art here. Soldiers, these men are killers. Yeah, so am I. You know, in case you didn't pick that up when you watched me brutally murder a hundred people at the prison three minutes ago. All right, around 20 minutes of this film is shot and edited to make it look like one shot. And the way this moves the viewer through the space is impressive. See, I know how to get respect where respect is due. It was really nice of the bad guys to let Yaz run away from the automobile before they blew it up. They are very considerate. This looks like the place where John Connor got stabbed in Terminator Salvation. Don't you ever remind me of Terminator Salvation. This train with all this shit on it couldn't have been cheap. Seriously, who the fuck is paying for this extraction? He just hid behind a ladder and that worked. Nick just shot this guy three times, but his buddy still has his gun pointed at the ground. The fuck was he waiting for? I don't care how bulletproof your helmet is. I don't believe you can take a shot to the head without being knocked out or knocked down or at minimum reevaluating your life. Just like the first movie, this one also peaked about 40 minutes in. Premature extractilation too? Oh, what a casual train derailment. Let's just cut away to this car driving in the countryside. His mind to our mind, his thoughts to our thoughts. What is this, some kind of flashback meld? Does the fact that they broke into a prison to rescue a woman and her two children not tip anyone off that this might be a rescue mission? We're supposed to think these guys are at least a little smart, right? The devastating look of this scene makes me feel stupid for suspending the disbelief of them all surviving the crash. Beating a dead Nagazi. Yaz will die because he didn't set his phone to lock when the screen time out. She's mad at you. It's not unusual. To be loved by anyone. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. Movie expects me to believe that this kid has his uncle's phone number memorized, and I do not believe you, movie. Let's look past the fact he's a f***ing dumbass kid, and instead realize that in 2023, no one knows anyone's f***ing number. Without our contact lists, we are all screwed. Hemsworth is putting in a solid performance here that more than carries the emotional weight of this character's past. There really was no need to flashback about it. No, he's coming. And apparently, like, right f***ing now, so it can be perfectly timed with the end of your story. This kid still has this phone, and no one noticed it was gone. Also, I attempted to translate this in an app, and that made it read far more like an exchange with my college girlfriend than I am comfortable with. Somehow this indiscriminate shower of bullets will not be enough to change Sandro's mind, because he thinks that he is Morpheus, and that Zerab is Neo coming to rescue him from Agent Smith. Choosing to put armor on damn near every part of your body except your head. Your mother did all of this to protect you, come back! I can't figure out, after everything that has happened, why Sandro would go to his uncle instead of staying with his mother. Did he know he needed to be a hostage used for Zurab's benefit in the final act of the movie? Did Sandro read the script? Thinking this is a good hiding spot. The poor mother who owns this car and will get pulled over later today for a broken taillight he had no knowledge of. You are right? Asking this question. Do they fucking look all right, father of Captain Kirk? Also, when are we getting Star Trek 4? Or you could just, you know, shoot them while they're outside the building and not have to create some convoluted plan that causes you to use extra manpower to get them back into the building. Discount Bane. If Zerab's goal is to kill his brother's wife and kid, then why is he having the guy with the giant rocket shooting thing pin them in instead of, you know, blowing up the car they're currently in? Super odd that Zurab shot down the helicopter instead of just pinning it in. Does this count as the second extraction of this movie? And does that mean someone is getting billed twice for this service? <laughs> Tyler is prepared to take a bullet to the face for the sake of looking badass. Getting you out of here, okay? Gonna get you back to your sister. I hope Tyler meant get you and your sister into witness protection, because just taking her back to her sister, most likely the first place Zurab would look, is just as much a death sentence as the elevator almost was. This picture looks more like the danger is a single stair step and not an elevator shaft. Giving me more reasons to avoid the gym. These two are not sliding after their fall, but will begin to do so in a moment because plot necessity will suddenly decrease their coefficient of friction. I'm going to enjoy killing you. Then I would suggest less talking and more shooting, but you're not gonna do that, are you? <sighs> this works, and thank God this gym went cheap on the window installation. Nick could have just as easily bounced off the window and fallen to her death. Unlike all the other henchmen he indiscriminately extinguished, Tyler doesn't take out Zerab while he is incapacitated. I don't know if he thinks he's dead or if he thinks Zerab will just give up now that he has fallen five feet from grace. I like Yaz, but it doesn't change the fact that his death scene dies on for all the some time. Also, they had to kill Yaz to keep us interested in justice. Otherwise, the only reason to keep this thing going is to save Sandro from a situation we still aren't sure he wants to be saved from.
from. And then they just walked away like it was f***ing Ocean's Eleven. Half the damn cars in this movie are product placements. I mean Volkswagens. <laughs> Using God to figure out whether you should run away or keep on murdering innocent people. No, why didn't you stay? I couldn't. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't f***ing fix it. I know exactly how to fix this. It's a little thing I like to call skip. Action movie has our protagonist gear up Rambo style cliche. He gave Tyler his exact location. At the airfield by St. George's Church. But for some reason, Zerab looks surprisingly surprised that Tyler is blowing up all his stuff. Also, this movie is full of so much gun shooting, but it's rarely people actually shooting at the people they're trying to kill. When Constantine survived the first round with Tyler, I suspected they were saving his character for a more elaborate fight. But no, they were just teasing the idea that they weren't going to underuse Daniel Bernhardt in this movie. The one the boy here is. It's between me and you. Let him go. I would say this is noble of Tyler, but I honestly don't think rescuing the kid was at the top of Tyler's mind when he decided to come fight Zerab. Not even sure saving the boy was in his top ten. Now weigh the gun in your hand and point at his head. This is the second time Zerab could have been done with all of this if he didn't fuck about and straight up shot Tyler instead of the textbook villain bullshit he's doing right now. Coward is a killing an unarmed man in the bowels of a prison. That is a weirdly specific definition of cowardice. I don't believe that's Webster approved, buddy. It's okay, man. It most certainly is not okay, mate. Showing up in the nick of time. Nick, the boy. To be fair, the boy is pretty much the only reason they are in this current situation. I'm not saying they should risk the boy's life, but I'm not not saying it. All the action in this movie is really good, but there is a limit to the amount of shooty shooty bang bang I can digest before I become more interested in the restoration work going on in this church. The bow saw is typically used for pruning branches and cutting small logs. Now I'm questioning the quality of the restoration work going on in this church. This f***ing kid just removed this bomb vest without it going off, and I'm not sure I f***ing believe it. Have you actually seen how f***ing stupid and incompetent this kid is movie? Have you? The movie could have ended here. It won't. But it could happen. Thank God they locked Tyler up. He may be our hero, but everywhere he goes turns into an all-out war zone. He's an absolute liability. And I'm glad they didn't end the movie with him going off on another mission to help someone. Right? It's like the goddamn sound of music out here, isn't it? Movie had Idris fucking Elba and wasted him on two very silly scenes. Who I work for? Who's that? A naughty motherfucker. I can already tell Extraction 3 is going to be mostly about pulling teeth. I hate kids. What was that? I farted. It's that dog wearing a Valentino shirt. He's got Scott. Move. <laughs> They're hootie hooing. What? They're fing hootie hooing. Oh, what does that mean? She's mad at you. I am aware of the effect I have on women. You're all Top Gun graduates, the elite. The best of the best. That was yesterday. This seat sucks. I'm the one with stigmata. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. I know I never said that. I never said thank you for doing what I... Couldn't. 